my name is Tim Eise. I'm 40 years old uh, from Hamburg, Germany. I'm uh, married. Oh wow, so it's uh, uh, like eight years now. And uh, I do have three daughters. I'm really, I'm nuts for anything animal related, especially reptiles. I've been to Kenya, I've been to, uh, to Thailand and uh, whatever animals are around I'm, I'm interested in. I really love to snorkel and uh, be near to the ocean. Well, I started uh, breeding boas like 15 to 16 years ago. And just the idea uh, was fascinating me that the hobby can kind of take care of itself and maybe I can uh, even uh, get an extra buck uh, out of it. And um, so, yeah, that's, that's how I got started uh, during my uh, study years at the university. Um, I was living in a three, uh, in a three bedroom flat. Um, with one, one roommate, he got one of the rooms. I got the tiny room uh, where I used to have my bed and underneath my bed I created like an own closet out of uh, OSB wood actually. I had like a very small uh, desk uh, for myself and a, a quarantine area. And uh, we had a big uh, living room, uh, but this big living room consists completely out of uh, cages so uh, and this is how it uh, got everything got started we were assembling the cages um, inside of this tiny flat in uh, in the entrance area yeah we we started with 16 with 16 uh, big cages for the adults no rack system so far because we i, I never had a litter this uh, at this time Well, when I first started uh, breeding boas, um, I was fascinated by the idea um, that the, uh, the hobby pays for itself um, and that I might be able to, uh, to make uh, an extra buck uh, for living. And um, there was a time when I uh, thought that how cool it would be if I would be a full-time breeder. And like, I don't know, maybe Five years ago, six years ago, I realized that I never want to be a 100% full-time breeder. So I don't want to breed boas without having anything else uh, left that uh, can generate an income. Um, because once you are a full-time breeder and you have nothing else uh, than the, the, the animals, you can get under uh, quite under pressure. Um, and I don't want to be uh, dependent on the fact whether I sell an animal or not, uh, if I can send my kids to school or uh, uh, be able to pay for a hobby or uh, whatever. So I always wanted to uh, stay independent from the income stream from Imperator Moss. Well, it started all uh, with the fact that I wanted to have a budgie before we uh, we're making our way to the to the breeder. There was a news a newspaper article uh, saying that the feathers of of the budgie can cause cancer and whatever. Uh, however, my parents got scared and uh, uh, they decided that uh, I shall pick uh, a different pet uh, for myself. So they went. They took me to the uh, biggest pet store uh, at the place where we uh, where we have been living, and uh, I was about. 10 or 11 years old and this pet store it was a huge pet store and they had uh, like salt water uh, basins they had um, a lot of fresh uh, freshwater uh, fish um, but also lots and lots of reptiles and uh, i was like uh, i want to have a lizard and uh, of course my parents said no um, but i was able to to get some books and it took not long that i was able to uh, I, I knew all the Latin names of, of all the animals and I was fascinated by snakes um, back then immediately. But it took quite a few years before I was allowed to have uh, my first gecko, my first anole. Then I had some, uh, some turtles and um, uh, someone found a tortoise uh, in, the, in the neighborhood and they uh, stopped by. Uh, here we know you have uh, reptiles. so. Uh, it was uh, kind of a small zoo, but it took me uh, quite a few more years. Once I finished my um, 
apprenticeship of a dental technician, I got the permission to have my very first snake. My first snake being a classy one, uh, I started with a corn snake. Just a simple 100% head albino corn snake back then. And it was even back then, it was nothing special at all. So, uh, but uh, it was uh, such a beautiful animal and uh, I got it as a baby and it, uh, she's been perfect. First of all, I uh, started keeping uh, way more different snakes. Um, uh, once I started with my first corn snake, um, it took not uh, long before I had like uh, 10 corn snakes. Uh, my next snake's been some carpet pythons. I used to keep uh, blood pythons as well. Uh, even some ball pythons, uh, but only the wild type. Uh, I also used to keep some uh, colubrids. I used to have a pair of uh, Lampropeltes Pyromelana Houdini. They've been so beautiful, but they've also been a pain when it came to feeding. So uh, one day I decided to look around for uh, other uh, animals uh, that, so I might be able to trade the pair. And this way I got my very first boa. You uh, did not find uh, like tons of information of breeding boas, especially when it comes to breeding morphs. So um, that's definitely a plus today, especially today with YouTube, with all the videos that are, that been uploaded. I mean, we're just putting a link here where we are uh, showing you how to identify different boas from, from a litter. Back then, these videos uh, simply did not exist. I, I'm not sure when uh, YouTube launched. But, however, it was more like checking the websites of the different people, etc, uh, etc. Et having some community sites where uh, the breeder back then were posting and sharing their experiences. Well, you might have seen our new logo and uh, you noticed uh, this passion and patience uh, below the logo. And uh, in my opinion, that's exactly uh, what it needs uh, or was it what it takes. You need to have a passion for this and you need to be patient. Like minimum five to seven years of work is what you need to put in before you really see uh, the, re the very first good results. Uh, well, in, in the end, it's more like what does it take to start to breed successfully. In my opinion, it is like, first of all, you need to focus on having a, a foundation, on creating a basement for your breeding. So, for example, when you start breeding and probably you pick the pair that's going to create a really nice combination of morphs uh, that has been highly desired. I see a lot of people, they start selling those animals straight away within the first three years i recommend to keep all the high-end animals that you are producing and using it at the foundation for uh, your own stock so building up the stock from from the bottom up don't sell uh, these animals uh, straight away let's just give an example. Uh, when we started breeding boas, uh, we had we produced some sunglows, and back then the sunglows they uh, were really highly requested. The first breeding year, the first season, we kept I believe like 1.5 sunglows for ourselves. So all the sunglows that we produced uh, back then, we kept for ourselves to have a foundation to continue working with, and that is like mandatory when you want to become um, a good breeder or a successful breeder. My biggest challenge uh, when we started uh, breeding boars has uh, been the situation. Uh, we, we had the first litter, um, we had the first couple of hundred babies. It was all by myself. So I had a full-time job uh, and at home my living room consists 100% out of uh, cages. Uh, we had a few rack system for the sub edits and I had like 200 baby racks. Uh, in my bathroom uh, so that's also been the time when I met my wife so I knew she was the right one because she did not left screaming the biggest struggle is the beginning until you have uh, uh, enough money to hire the first part-time employee and that would be also uh, something that I would like to do different um, than I did back then uh, I would 
look around for uh, part-time employees way more early um, to help me at least doing the, uh, the basic cleaning of the animals, uh, etc, etc. I have quite a few crazy memories uh, since I started. Most of the times it's the uh, customers that can surprise you uh, over and over again. When we got into the high-end morphs, I was always like very thankful because in my mind it was, it's always like people are spending so much money, they will take good care of the animals. So that was my general assumption. But there are still some people out there that prove me wrong. I've once had a, a young man visiting me and he'd been here twice. So the first time he came here, uh, was by train and uh, he uh, took a cab from the train station to my facility and uh, he picked up an animal so it was like a regular deal like a few months later he contacted me again and he wanted to uh, purchase a few more animals and we were talking about um, a couple of thousand euros so this time again he came by cab and we started talking and I was like well we are living here in the big city so you can send the cab away we have more of them uh, here so uh, once we finished you can call a new cab and he told me no 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 uh, I'm paying 400 euros so for this cab so uh, he can wait and I was like why on earth are you paying 400 euros for a cab and, and he told me that yeah I missed the train and it was also stressful and uh, so I took the cab and, and you have to understand he was living 200 kilometers away from here so he actually took a cab and went 200 kilometers uh, to my place to purchase some animals and yeah picked up what we have been talking about and he he paid the animals uh, a few months later a stranger called me and he was like uh, yeah i'm getting some animals from you and they are in a really bad shape and i, I can grab it all for a couple of hundred bucks and that's been actually the animals that i sold to this guy yeah, there are still some crazy people out there and they used to surprise you every now and then. Yeah, you always want that the animals uh, that you sold are uh, treated in a good way, but it is really hard uh, to make sure, yeah, you, you never can be sure how the animals actually be treated. Uh, they can also be sold uh, quite fast after they, they've been bought. So um, yeah, that is, that is probably one of the main topics that really gives me a hard time and really is what I'm struggling uh, the most with, selling these animals and I don't know how they've been uh, treated. But I do see a lot of positive developments like for uh, example Morph Market where you are able to rate not only the breeder or the seller but also the buyer. And I'm pretty sure that uh, over the ne next years uh, we should even improve this. I mean, there are so many different regulations in all the countries or sometimes even within the country itself. Uh, you have different regulations and people are not forced everywhere to have a, like a certification that they are able to, that they have the knowledge uh, to keep an animal like a boar or a reptiles in general. But in my opinion, it would be like a very positive development if we can create something like a certificate that only people with the certificate, for example, would be allowed to keep reptiles or boars. Well, how, how do I manage it? I, I mean, uh, in the end, I'm very thankful for all the employees that we found in the course of the past years. Without them, it would not be uh, possible to do anything like this with all the stuff that I have going on. For me, it is like, I, I mean, I used to work as a process engineer because after my apprenticeship to become a, a dental technician, I uh, left to university and I studied transport and logistics management. So uh, I've been working in this area like for roughly 10 years so the process engineer uh, within me still always tries to have like standardized processes this way i try to to be able to focus on on the sales on on social media etc etc but even in this in these areas uh, now i need more and more help so how do i manage it um, in the end i manage it this way that i always look not how can i do a certain task but who can do this task who can fulfill the task this way 
that I am happy with it. Of course, you always have to have a feeling for your employees. How do they do? Do they need support? You always need to have kind of helicopter view. You need, always need to prioritize uh, things. So there's always a lot, a lot of work, but you need to prioritize what needs to be done next. That's uh, for me the most important tasks. Well, that's been it for today. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Completely different, hopefully not too boring. We did our best to make it as interesting as possible. And uh, in case you missed our last videos and you'd like to know how we built up our wooden cages, here is the video uh, to it. And also putting the link here of our VPI Sanglo Motley blood litter. So make sure to check it out. Leave a thumbs up, make a comment and make sure to subscribe and we see each other next Thursday. Bye bye.